Welcome back. There's an age-old Chinese proverb that, as you're about to learn, can be applied perfectly to Savannah's growing violent crime problems. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. We are obviously not going to be talking about trees here. Instead, the decades of deceit and neglect that dominated the thinking of our local elected officials and law enforcement when it came to the growing threat of gangs. To be fair, there were a couple of hit and run law enforcement attacks on gangs led mostly by federal agents when rival gangs were shooting each other in the streets. But what the years of failing to sustain the attack on the growing gang problem has cost all of us will now be impossible to grow out of. Well, it does look like a lot of brand new concrete around here. Yeah, lots, lots of 90 babies around here. Savannah's Woodville Cemetery is filling up. It used to be where you could have walked, walked through without stepping on graves. Now it's so full, you have to be mindful. It's get, it done got really packed over the past two years. This place used to be empty. And over the last two years, Savannah native Nequil Graham will tell you no fewer than 15 of these graves have been filled with her own classmates, victims of Savannah's skyrocketing violent crime. Nequil will also tell you she too was digging her own grave as she sunk deeper and deeper into Savannah's prolific gang culture. He has a V right here backwards and upside down with a line through. Yeah. And then he's got a K here, so you got blood killers. Um, what year was this? This was 2004. For Savannah, the inevitable began more than a decade ago when Jose Ramirez was a Metro street cop assigned as a one-man gang unit. At that time, our state legislators recognize that the state of Georgia is in a state of crisis with gang violence. Is that state of crisis include Savannah and Chatham County? That includes every municipality, every, every city, every county that lies in the state of Georgia. That statewide message and the passage of a powerful gang statute were given to communities like ours back in 1992. So by the early 2000s, Ramirez had his work cut out for him. For years, he photographed, documented, and cataloged gang members, rivalries, and the violent crimes they were committing in your neighborhoods every day. Every bit of that effort wasted time. Here I am giving a job description to, to, uh, to, to identify gangs, to monitor gangs. Um, to go out and prosecute gangs. But when the time came that, hey, hey, here I am, I've identified this gang in this particular area, and then here's another rival gang in this area, they might be responsible for these crimes and so on. And they say, all right, that's good, don't talk about it anymore, just, just leave it to the wayside. Um, it becomes frustrating. Ramirez's bosses at Metro Police didn't want to hear about it because Savannah wasn't about to tell the world this growing tourism mecca had a gang problem. This despite the overwhelming evidence and the overwhelming threat to its citizens and other police officers. So while your elected officials and law enforcement officials were busy living in their fantasy gang-free world, the jail administrator here at the Chatham County Detention Center, a guy named John Wilcher, was actually keeping tabs on gangs and gang members, doing it by identifying tattoos, colors, and those gang members admitting to their affiliations so they weren't housed with rival gang members. In the end, now Sheriff John Wilcher discovered year after year after year a gang infestation. Sheriff Wilcher gave me the list of confirmed gangs represented by inmates who have come through the jail in the last 14 months alone. There were more than 80. And when counting the individuals who gladly identified themselves as members of these 80 gangs, jailers documented some 528, again, last year alone. Presenting this documentation to the rest of the community, Wilcher says, got him laughed out of the room. Well, no doubt, a nervous laugh. That was then, this is now, December 30th, 2016. The FBI sends out an internal awareness bulletin warning local law enforcement of a credible threat by the National Bloods Gang. Four Bloods members are currently facing death penalty murder prosecutions right here in Chatham County. The order from the imprisoned head of the Bloods tells local gang members to use civil unrest to assault police officers, that assaulting officers will increase your rank in the gang, to prepare for war against the gang's true oppressors and pins the Southeast as a specific target area. Sheriff Wilcher doesn't mess around with threats like this. I've even went so far as telling officers don't go home with your jacket hanging in your 
window has sheriff on it, lead in the seat. You don't want nobody to know that because of all the drive-by shootings and all these uh, killings that we've had in the last, what, eight months. And then those tattoos are going to depend on the placement of them. The sheriff also mandates regular training to make sure his officers understand the dangers of not being able to instantly recognize gang members. This is not amateur hour on behalf of the gangs that do exist in this county, is it? No, you, it is not. Like we got uh, Carver uh, Village uh, thoroughbreds, there's been 26 of them that's come through here yeah. in the last 14 months. Yeah. And this list is not unusual for the past five, six, ten years at this jail? No. It's not unusual. You're going to have many all the time. And it is hardly business as usual at Meg Heap's office these days either. As perhaps the first public official to mention the G word in public, you could say she opened a box many before her wanted sealed. When I got into the spot, when I became DA, it's like, okay, yeah, we got a problem. The half dozen people injured in a gang revenge shooting at the Coastal Empire Fair did become the point of no return for Savannah. At that moment, many on the city council and county commission, about to see the unspoken become the talk of the town, took a deep breath and have been holding it ever since. Matt Breeden is the district attorney's new gang prosecutor. The fact that there is this intelligence void, so to speak, on, on these groups and these gangs that are operating in Savannah is why it's going to take just a little bit of time to get a handle on it. And make no mistake, the handle is turning, finally. The district attorney's office, Metro Police, are now meeting regularly with our federal partners, ATF, the FBI, and U.S. Attorney's Office. And they're spending a lot of money on the tools aimed at tracking and attacking gangs here in Savannah, something that other communities in Georgia have been doing now for decades. You're not going to see results tomorrow. It's going to take time to build these cases to build what other cities have of years worth of intelligence and knowledge on how these groups and gangs operate for us to get to that level. You know this is not a new problem. No, no, just from my experience and my education, I know this isn't a new problem. Gangs are a huge target of the new Stop Gun Violence Initiative in Savannah. Captain Lenny Gunther heads the intelligence gathering end of that. There's no denying that um, it's a lot of hard work right now uh, because of uh, what happened in the past. But I would say 100% under Chief Lumpkin's leadership that we're heading in the right direction. Is attacking a gang problem, once you establish that you've got one, more surgical or carpet bombing? It's surgical. It's surgical. That surgery includes something called a custom notification. And this is the first time the chief has ever released one of these actual notification letters to the media. It is a hand-delivered letter signed by the chief that lets an individual know Metro is now laser-focused on their activities, that they are considered at high risk for death or imprisonment, that their gang affiliation is no secret, and that their criminal history makes them a prime target for federal prosecution. Is it working? Again, Savannah is brand new to this whole gang thing, thanks to years of hiding behind the illusion that gangs were always someone else's problem. Oh my gosh, there's just so many, so many. Yeah. Some kids out here, they didn't even make it to 16 to 17. And I just wish, you know, things could have happened a little bit quicker before it was too late. Nicole Graham is turning her life around with the help of Metro's impact program, a degree, a job, a life. So did denying our gang problem for so long save the Savannah economy? Well, it certainly saved our tourists from associating the word gang with our community, but it cost those of us who live here perhaps hundreds of lives and certainly our quality of life. By Metro's own estimates, a successful counter to gangs here could cut the violent crime rate by more than 60 percent. 60 percent. Our murder rate already rivals Chicago and New Orleans, according to the latest FBI numbers. With our new police administration and DA, yes, a tree has finally been planted. For it to grow, it'll be up to us to hold our elected officials accountable for their past and their current efforts to keep up the pressure.